have to meet me in the middle here. Hey, you keep pushing me on this, my foot's gonna meet the middle of your ass. <laughs> you slept with another woman. Oh, you're, you're one to talk. <laughs> you know, I think it might be time for you to start using night cream. A woman in my office is a lesbian. I'm just saying. I'm not going to tell you what they spent on that wedding, but $40,000 is a lot of money. Could we please maybe just settle it after the wedding? All right, fine, but I just want to say I'm not paying for your wine cellar. You thieving would be speaking German if it weren't for us cheap little man. People just know me now from being a Mr. Geller and friends. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Geller, you look wonderful. It is great to have you here. Let us take off your coats. Whoa, is snowing out there? No. Jack Geller is uh, the father of Monica and Ross. And uh, I can't even, uh, other than the actress, Christina Pickles, I can't think of, what's the mother's name? What's my wife's name on it? Judy. Judy, right. That's his character. The character of Jack Geller doesn't even remember his wife's name. You remember the Ludwins. Yeah. The big one had a thing for you, didn't she? Mm. They all had a thing for him. <laughs> I think that uh, Jack and Judy are somewhat prejudiced uh, about their children, whether they admit it or not. Don't listen to your mother. You're independent and you always have been. Even when you were a kid and you were chubby and you had no friends, you were just fine. <laughs> I recall the first show that established the relationship between the parents and the daughter and the parents and the son, where we doted on Ross and seemed to dismiss Monica. I read about these women trying to have it all, and I thank God our little harmonica doesn't seem to have that. <laughs> I had a dream about Mr. Geller last night. Really? One of my favorite episodes was when Lisa Kudrow's character uh, uh, has a crush on, on Jack Geller. And, and I thought that was so funny. Okay, look at him. Look at those strong hands. Oh, and I wouldn't give to be that can of condensed milk. <laughs> Christina Pickles is a consummate uh, character actress oh, and a very serious artist. and quite intense. Jack! Could you come in here for a moment? No! What's that curry taste? Curry. Mm. Do you know what it's like to grow up with someone who is critical of every single thing you say? I can imagine. Oh, it's a wonder your mother turned out to be the positive, life-affirming person she is. <laughs> that is a wonder. <laughs> I'm a very good mother, but I'm also on the verge of being a dysfunctional mother, as we all are. And I sometimes would want to obsess about the wrong things, about how my daughter was dressed rather than how she felt, you know. Oh, don't wear that, darling. No, no, I like it, but don't wear it. You know, that kind of stuff, which you don't really allow yourself to say. You think it. But I, the fun for me is that I can say all that stuff as Judy Geller and get away with it. What's with your hair? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's different? Nothing. Oh, maybe that's it. <laughs> I did like that wonderfully funny episode when Monica was stuck in the bathroom while we had a quickie because it was Jack's birthday. So, Jack, you ever think about trading me in for a younger model? Of course not. Mm. With you, it's like I've got two 25-year-olds. <laughs> mm. Oh, Jack, stop! Come on! It's my birthday! And I, you know, I would imagine that um, Judy just pretended that nothing had happened as she walked back out into the living room, because she's very good at denial. I realize you guys have been wondering what exactly happened between Carol and me, and so, well, here's the deal. When it was explained to me that Ross's ex-wife was a lesbian, I didn't turn to Ross and say, you married a lesbian? 
I turned to Monica and said, How do you know about this? <laughs> Which I thought was so brilliant because it turned it back onto her doing the wrong thing again. Ross can do no wrong. Janice! Janice! There. <laughs> the this is like a reunion in the hall. <laughs> I play Janice on Friends, and I have, uh, I've been on since the first season as Chandler's on again, off again, fabulously annoying girlfriend. Hey, Janice. Oh my god, I am so glad you called me. I had the most supremely awful day. When I first went to audition for the role, I just, I looked at the material, and when she said, you know, I got you these socks, moose and squirrel, squirrel and moose, whichever you want, mix and match. I'm not quite sure what exactly what the line was. I just heard her say, You could wear Bullwinkle and Bullwinkle, or you could wear Rocky and Rocky, or you can mix and match Moose and Squirrel. In the rehearsal process of that first episode, there was a moment, the laugh was sort of born in the rehearsal because there was a moment where Chandler is sort of knocking back 89 uh, uh, espressos because he's trying to build up the nerve to break up with me. And uh, and he's completely wired and insane, and, and he goes and gets me some sort of swimming pool full of coffee and hands it to me in this big, big cup. And before I was even able to get it up to my lips, he asked me if I wanted another one. Well, I'm going to get another espresso. Uh, more latte? No. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm still working on mine. And it was so funny that that I had to laugh. And so because I had to laugh, Janice had to laugh in that moment. And I just looked up at him and went. <laughs> I think, oh my God, the oh my God was was maybe born in that first episode. I know, looking back, I'm not altogether sure, but I know that, you know, we had that great moment where she just was like completely verklempt and her tears were coming. And <laughs> that became sort of a signature thing for Janice, too. We would just sort of fight back the overwhelming emotion. What a crappy night. Well, ho. I have enjoyed the fact that uh, your shirt's been sticking out of your zipper ever since you came back from the bathroom. <laughs> it's always great to work in front of a live audience, and then, of course, I have the added boost of being the surprise element, which is fantastic. You walked around all night in the city by yourself. He hooked up! <laughs> The episode I did with Ross, where um, I spent the night with Ross, you know, there was all this buildup about who he had been with and who he had been with, and the audience never suspected that it was going to be me. Tell us about her. Ross, you left your scarf in the... And when I came out from behind that curtain, the reaction went on for five minutes. We just stood there and stood there and stood there until some of us started to lose it. I mean, I, I think I started to crack up and I, I lifted the scarf that I was returning to Ross and I, I, I think I, I eventually sort of put it up near my face because it was quite something. Hey, you guys. <laughs> People always want to hear me say, oh my God, you love me, Chandler Bing. You just don't know you love me. <laughs> Breathe. 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 You're gonna kill me! Okay, and this is Funny Clown. Funny Clown is only for after his naps, not before his naps, or he won't sleep. Susan's gonna be here any minute. It's uh, kind of an anniversary. Oh, I thought you guys got married in uh, January. Different kind of anniversary. Oh. Oh. Originally, I was auditioning for um, Chandler, and uh, and. The, it worked out pretty well for a while because I had four nipples and then we did the surgery and, and no, no, and it, they botched it so then they said, well, would you play the lesbian? Let's say you and I give it another shot. <laughs> Rob. No, 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 I know what you're going to say, you're a lesbian. <laughs> I never even really thought one way or another about the lesbian, it wasn't an issue for me, so um, I just thought it would be a fun part. How are you doing with your contractions? Oh, I love them. Each one's like a little party in my uterus. <laughs> it's great to be a part of a show where you can you can have so much fun and to deliver a baby. You know, that that for that episode for me, that was that was really one of the um, most emotional um, episodes for me to actually deliver the child. All right, he's crowding. Here he comes. Well, well, let me see. I gotta see. I gotta see. Oh. oh. <laughs> It's, it's huge. Carol, how are you doing this? Stop helping! 
One of my fondest memories, if I were to go back and look, is um, my kiss with David Schwimmer. Um, because it says so much about our relationship. Um, and uh, that there can be so much love between two people. I love you. He was very sweaty when he was kissing me. It was lovely. <laughs> but so was I, so it's okay. We're not just fine. We're getting married. <laughs> As in, I now pronounce you wife and wife, Mary? Everyone wanted to tune in to see the episode where we got married. And it was the highest rated show up to that point. Um, it was very well received. And I think for the gay community, it was huge to actually be able to see that. I wish that there had been more. And I, I wish that I hadn't worn that hat. <laughs> I hated that hat. <laughs> Thank you. Anytime. Ross. <laughs> On the back side of it, I see that for many people, it's been that lovely wedge in the door for people to open themselves up to their truest selves and, and to have a really positive role model on television. I mean, I, I certainly didn't go out with that intention, but it's somehow, in a very lovely way, turned out to be that. And I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of that. To be given this kind of a woman to play with such good writing and with such amazing actors, I'm just deeply grateful. They're so generous with their humor and their, and their comedy, and it's constant. Off camera, on camera, in the dressing rooms, everywhere you go, they're always working on, on bringing the best kind of comedy to the screen. For me, it's been an incredible blessing to be a part of this fam family and to have this experience of working so collaboratively with, with the creators of the show and with, uh, and with the cast. That's why I wore a sweater, I, I, because it's such a close neck. Living room, because she's very good at denial. I realize. You guys have been wondering what exactly happened between Carol and me, and so well. Here's the deal. When he was explained to me that Ross's ex-wife was a lesbian, I didn't turn to Ross and say, you married a lesbian? I turned to Monica and said, and you knew about this? <laughs> Which I thought was so brilliant because it turned it back onto her doing the wrong thing again. Ross can do no wrong. reunion in the hall. <laughs> I play Janice on Friends, and I have, uh, I've been on since the first season as Chandler's on again, off again, fabulously annoying girlfriend. <laughs> hey, Janice. Oh my God, I am so glad you called me. I had the most supremely awful day. When I first went to audition for the role, I just, I looked at the material and to meet me in the middle yeah hey you keep pushing me on this my foot's gonna meet the middle of your ass you slept with another woman oh you're you're one to talk <laughs> you know i think it might be time for you to start using night cream a woman in my office is a lesbian <laughs> i'm just saying I'm not going to tell you what they spent on that wedding, but $40,000 is a lot of money. Could we please maybe just settle it after the wedding? All right, fine, but I just want to say I'm not paying for your wine cellar. You thieving would be speaking German if it weren't for us cheap little man. People just know me now from being a Mr. Geller and friends. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Geller, you look wonderful. It is great to have you here. Let us take off your coats. Whoa, snowing out there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jack Geller is uh, the father. Functional mother, as we all are. And I sometimes would want to obsess about the wrong things, about how my daughter was dressed rather than how she felt, you know. 
Oh, don't wear that, darling. No, no, I like it, but don't wear it. You know, that kind of stuff, which you don't really allow yourself to say. You think it. But I, the fun for me is that I can say all that stuff as Judy Geller and get away with it. What's with your hair? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's different? Nothing. Oh, maybe that's it. <laughs> I did like that wonderfully funny episode when Monica was stuck in the bathroom while we had a quickie because it was Jack's birthday. So, Jack, you ever think about trading me in for a younger model? Of course not. Mm. With you, it's like I've got two 25-year-olds. <laughs> oh, Jack, stop! Come on! It's my birthday! And I, you know, I would imagine that um, Judy just pretended that nothing had happened as she walked back out into the living room. Other of Monica and Ross, and um, I can't even, other than the actress, Christina Pickles, I can't think of, what's the mother's name? What's my wife's name on it? Judy! Judy, right. That's his character. The character of Jack Geller doesn't even remember his wife's name. You remember the Ludwins. The big one had a thing for you, didn't she? They all had a thing for him. I think that uh, Jack and Judy are somewhat prejudiced uh, about their children, whether they admit it or not. Don't listen to your mother. You're independent and you always have been. Even when you were a kid and you were chubby and you had no friends, you were just fine. <laughs> I recall the first show that established the relationship between the parents and the daughter and the parents and the son, where we doted on Ross and seemed to dismiss Monica. I read about these women trying to have it all, and I thank God our little harmonica doesn't seem to have that. <laughs> about Mr. Geller last night. Really? One of my favorite episodes was when Lisa Kudrow's character uh, uh, has a crush on, on Jack Geller. And, and I thought that was so funny. Okay, look at him. Look at those strong hands. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be that can of condensed milk. <laughs> Christina Pickles is a consummate uh, character actress oh, and a very serious artist and quite intense. Jack! <laughs> Could you come in here for a moment? <laughs> no! <laughs> What's that curry taste? Curry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to grow up with someone who is critical of every single thing you say. I can imagine. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a wonder your mother turned out to be the positive, life-affirming person she is. <laughs> that is a wonder. <laughs> I'm a very good mother, but I'm also on the verge of being a dysfunction.